during these fascial system lessons, we're going to be building a foundation of knowledge about the, the fascial system. And we're going to be covering these five different points uh, that are on the screen here. So we're going to be looking at understanding different types of fascia, but we are going to be focusing on intramuscular fascia. Um, that's a, something that we've talked about before. And then we're going to look at different functions of fascia and spend a little bit of time looking at hydraulic amplification and how that affects the strength of a muscle and also uh, viscoelasticity, which again is looking at not only the, the strength in a muscle, but also the, how we move and the efficiency of movement and how we're able to use our body in some respects like a spring. And then we're going to finish off talking about uh, some principles of fascia because they, they will start to make a little bit more sense once we've worked through these different structures and different functions. Um, of the fascia and then we'll summarize by uh, sort of applying this uh, to, to movement. So those are the five main points that we're going to be covering so let's get straight into them. To begin with fascia as a whole is a continual tensional network throughout the body. It's connecting your whole body together essentially so from your big toe to the top of your head and everything in between. It's the white covering that goes across all of the muscles. It has been known as a packing material, but as we're going to find out, it's much more than that. It's, it's like one organ that spans the whole body and is full of pockets, so pockets of muscles and then pockets within pockets um, for muscles and other organs. So not only is it a supporting structure throughout the body. It's also a living, breathing organism, uh, or organ I should say, within the body that is enhancing how we move, how strong we can be, uh, so on and so forth. So it's much more than just what it has been known as in the past as a packing material, um, where that in some respects does play a role, but it is much more than that. So what we've got here are essentially three layers of fascia or three different types of fascia. So we'll start from the most superficial. So uh, it's fascia superficials and it's located under the skin and contains fascicles of muscles, tissue, uh, muscles, tissues, muscle tissue, uh, blood vessels, nerves and about half the fat of the body. So again if we look at this diagram here what we'll see are the, well you can just see the label on here and you can just see whereabouts it is here. So it's where the adipose tissue lies. It's also where um, the layer just below the skin in here. So we've got a very superficial part to the, um, to the fascia. What we can then do is in some respects uh, go to a slightly deeper layer and we can see it again on the screen here but we've got premuscular fascia. And you can see this in this layer here. And then that brings us on to the layer we're going to talk about next, which is the intramuscular fascia. Now this is a this is a fascia that we've talked about before. And it lies underneath the fascial superficials and it covers groups of muscles, muscles, fasciculi, and muscle fibers. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit more depth on the next slide. We've already discussed it before so it will be um, familiar to you. And then we've got the next um, type of fascia which is planar tissue sheets. Now these are denser and include joint capsules, aponeuroses, uh, organ capsules, ligaments and tendons. So again we've got all these different types of connective tissues that then uh, in some respects are included within the movement system and even the organ capsules will have an effect on the movement system as well but we won't necessarily be talking about that in these lessons we're just going to be focusing uh, more on the intramuscular fascia and the different concepts uh, that it branches out into.
The types of intramuscular fascia you've heard before, we've looked at them in the muscular system. We've got the epimyceum, the perimyceum, and the endomyceum. Now, all three layers are made up of collagen fibers that are put together in no uniform pattern. And this non-uniform pattern gives it the stability and the mechanical strength to these collagen fibers. Because you've heard me talk about when I've talked about the muscle fibers within the core, how they sort of go across each other to create um, a whole that is greater than the sum of all parts. And I've given the, the metaphor of carbon fiber, all the fibers go in different directions to give it sort of high strength, but to be able to be very light. It's a similar sort of principle with the fascia. So not only have we got the muscles going in different directions to give it a degree of uh, strength, we've also got the fibers of the fascia doing the same, again, to give, it, um, to give it mechanical strength. So if we then look at the epimyceum, this is a sheath that surrounds each individual muscle along with tendons and attaches muscle to bone. So it's working around the muscle and then around the tendon and within the tendon to again attach the muscle to the bone. The thickness of the endomyceum varies. Uh, the shorter the muscle, the thicker it becomes, the, the, the thinner uh, around and, sorry, and thinner around longer muscles. It's only, it's the only tissue that links all the fascicles together and this allows tension generated in the area of the muscle to cause tension throughout the whole endomyceal network. So again, th this is giving that mechanical strength and stability not only um, to the fascia itself but also to the muscle as a whole and also the surrounding muscles as well which we're going to talk about in the next slide when we talk about um, hydraulic amplification. So if we now move on to the perimyceum, now this is a continuous sheath that divides the muscle into bundles and bundles of muscle fibers and these sheath merge into tendons and epimyceum. So we're starting now to understand that there are layers to, um, to fascia and this will not only be happening on a muscular level, so within the muscle going from the outer to the inner and the inner to the outer, but it also works on a, um, let's just say like a, a body um, uh, level as well. So we have to understand that. Now, right now they are not considered to be contributing to force transmission like the endomyceum. They can um, only show high tensile, tensile uh, stiffness at a very large extension beyond the range of the working muscle. Then we move on to endomyceum, which in some respects is the deepest part. So this is the final layer of the endomyceum. And uh, within, the muscle, uh, within the bundles of muscle fibers, it separates each individual one. So it's weaving between each one of them um, and then adjoining, creating a matrix throughout the muscle to again give that stability and strength uh, mechanical strength to it. Um, the endomyceum or the function of it um, is also unclear with a specific nature but what we will be talking about are the general nature of fascia later on with regards to its fun function. Um, it might play a role in the passive mechanical properties of the fibre. So those are the three layers to the intramuscular, um, um, intramuscular fascia. And what we are looking at and what we're starting to understand now is that there is a, um, a non-uniform structure to it. So it's giving us that mechanical stability and strength, but there is also layers to it in so much as it goes from uh, superficial to deep and obviously vice versa. But also these layers are joined. So they're not separate layers in so much as they just work in, uh, in rings they are connected from superficial to deep and deep to superficial as well. 